unfortunately the professional photographer does not want to see us anymore um, even though we've driven five hours to get here they're all in our van just flying about everywhere um, one of the biggest additions to the van is coming today hello and welcome back to the channel we are Liam and Janine and we live full-time in our converted Ford Transit camper van Frieda we bought the van impulsively and converted it not knowing that we would enjoy van life so much that one day we'd be living in it. We have no idea what winter will be like living in the van in winter in the UK but we're about to find out. If you follow our channel you will know that recently we sold our home and all of its contents and finally got to experience what true freedom feels like. Every day feels like an adventure no matter what we do. The last time you saw us we were in Kent foraging and eating mushrooms wild camping at Herne Bay and getting spooked out at an underground shell temple in Margate. Since then we drove all the way back to East Sussex to get some more work done on Frieda and spent bonfire night camped on a hill partying with the wonderful local van life community. Today the wind is blowing us back west of Britain as we have another really exciting opportunity and adventure to follow and we have some more alterations to be made to Frieda. So let's hit the road. Good morning everyone. Today we have woken up on a beach called Seaford Beach and it is such a beautiful beach. It's one of my favourites. Um, it's actually a beach close to where we used to live. The reason why we're here is because we got some work done on our van so we stayed close by um, for a couple of days and now we are heading across the country on a bit of a mission um, a really exciting opportunity has come about and we've decided to go full steam ahead with it so that's why we're going across the country so let's go take the second exit and stay on a27 so we are off to South Devon it is the was supposed to be the destination now to go to destination but from East Sussex near the Brighton area to get there was going to take over five hours which seems really strange and I couldn't work out why but there's a road closure somewhere um, and I'm thinking whatever the road closure is it could be because of an accident and that if we stop before we get to the road closure then tomorrow morning for instance it might be free and easy again so I've just suggested to Janine that we um, we spend overnight at Stonehenge again because it's sort of halfway uh, or over halfway. So yeah, we might <laughs> as a random change of destination, we might be stopping at Stonehenge tonight for a bit of wild camping, which is always fun. Yay, I'm so <laughs> <excited>. <laughs> the return to Stonehenge. Well, it's always good to start off a journey with a complete change of plans. So off we go to Stonehenge. I just want to get a lay of the land, I'm trying to work out what the, what the general vibe is up here at the moment. Upon arrival we realised that there was quite a community set up here with lots of vans, caravans, people camping in teepees and tents. We even saw chickens. We did not expect this at all. We found a spot that was relatively flat and parked up. Okay, we are at Stonehenge, finally. Uh, it's a good halfway point between um, Brighton and here. Um, as Janine explained to you earlier, we're in Brighton to get some stuff done to the van. Um, and now we're on the road again, which is brilliant. So yeah, halfway point here. It took us about two and a half hours to get here. Um, there's a lot of vans here, um, including quite a big van life community down the bottom. 
uh, which is incredible. It's very, very sort of gloomy, grey, medieval England weather, which is brilliant. Very, very fitting for uh, Stonehenge. Uh, kitchen rolls completely unraveled itself. Again, it seems to happen every single time we go anywhere um, because we always forget to tie it up. Um, so if anyone's got any tips for how to keep your kitchen roll from doing this, it was a brand new roll. Um, then let us know. Uh, Janine said she's going to uh, cook some food for us now. Um, I've got a bit of work to do, and yeah, just enjoy being at Stonehenge. That's terrible. And look, as long as you got, as long as you got, really... as long as you got a clear hole. I bet I'm the only person at Stonehenge doing this right now. Hey, yeah. What are you doing? Right, <laughs> oh, mate. You going for a walk? Hey, are you? <laughs> Why are you like? Are you coming in? <laughs> <laughs> you going for a walk? Yeah, so I am really hungry. I've not had anything today to eat, so um, I'm ready for some lunch. So today I'm going to be making a tropical um, Caribbean chicken curry, but vegan style. So yeah, I'll show you that now. Today's tropical chicken curry consists of onions, peppers, garlic, ginger, coconut, mango, and vegan chicken. We are using Taste and Glory, which is a great chicken substitute we bought at Sainsbury's. I will add the link to the recipe in the description if you fancy giving it a go. I want this meal to be nice and spicy, so I'm going to add a red chilli. I'm only adding one. I think that's going to be hot enough. I finished this curry and I've just tried it and it is gorgeous. Oh my God, it is so good. It's right up my street for flavors. It's got a tiny little like chili kick um, and it's creamy and coconutty and tropical with the mango and stuff. It's so good. Anyway, we're gonna eat this now. It's starting to get dark, so um, we'll probably eat it and then it will be dark. But um, I'm gonna see what Liam thinks of this curry. It's good, it's nice mangoes and um, vegan chicken and brown rice and rice and beans in front of Stonehenge. <laughs> Far from what they ate back in the ancient, the ancient days. But it's really good. I'm, I'm glad that we stopped here as a halfway point, actually, um, because it's just nice to break up the journey. Two and a half hours compared to five and a half hours or whatever it was. Brilliant. Thank you for the curry, sweetheart, sorry. <laughs> We finished our curry whilst the sun was going down and the evening was starting to set in. We decided to go for a wonder to go and see the stones. We walked for about five minutes and went in through the public footpath alongside the stones. So over there's like the burial grounds. Yeah, can you see the fire in the distance? Yeah. There's just like still bonfires and stuff going off. What's happened, Janine? <laughs> We've got loads of mosquitoes in here. So um, we're trying to sort of, I don't know, gas them out. <laughs> it's like 10 degrees outside, wasn't it? With the mosquitoes doing. I know. Weird. We're trying to, we're trying to create, a, uh, we're trying to create a, a, um, an inhabitable environment. So they decide to fly out the door <laughs> here to the nice environment. There's one up there, but it's not going. Anyway, it smells nice and it's fun to do. Is it working? I think so, yeah. I may have just put the heater on. Oh, have you put your, that's what breaks the heater. Oh, I've just done it. Maybe. How's one there? Go away. Go away.
gorgeous morning this is. The sun is out, there's no clouds in the sky um, and we can see Stonehenge in the distance and it's just gorgeous. Um, it was quite misty this morning uh, but that's cleared up just like about half an hour ago or so and we have hopped out of the van. We went up to go and see the stones um, just really briefly and now we're hopping back in the van and we're going to head off. Today we're leaving and we're going to South Devon which is where we were going yesterday but there was a road closure so that's why we stopped off here and I'm glad we did. Um, why? Hold on a second, I'm going to be here for a while. This is really dodgy. Yeah, it's dodgy. God. That's a really dodgy turning. And there's a huge dip as well, which is really bad for your van. We ran out of gas this morning, so couldn't enjoy a coffee at Stonehenge. We said our goodbyes and headed to a service station. Don't know where we got up to with explaining where we're going today, but we're going to South Devon anyway. We don't know the area too well. Uh, it's about two and a half hours drive from here again. And um, the reason why we're going is because we're launching something. So. Uh, as you might have seen from our Q&A video, we don't really talk about it too much um, on the channel. We've got a, uh, a sort of separate sort of online sort of business. It's a vegan food business and um, it's what keeps us on the road. And today, Vegan Food UK, which is the name of the business and the name of the channels and the community, um, is launching its first product. And it's amazing. And so Janine and I are going to go and um, see the product and see what it's, and, and just, yeah, get a first glimpse of it. Um, and yeah, and it's launching tomorrow hopefully, so today's Tuesday, it's launching tomorrow, so by the time you watch this video, it should have launched already, and if you want to buy it yourself, you can obviously do that, we'll leave a link, Ooh, watch out! We hit the road and headed to a town called Totnes. Since our meeting was later in the afternoon, we took the opportunity to go and wander this town. Oh, that was a long journey. Felt like it, it's only, it's only two and a half hours on the clock, but... Was it? Yeah, but it felt, felt like, like a long one. Oh, let's go, I'm hungry. <laughs> we wandered about this little quirky town for some time. Actually, time went really fast here as there were so many cute little independent shops and cafes along the streets. It has a chilled, relaxed vibe going on with crystal shops, boutiques, souvenir shops and worldwide fabrics. They operate a market here which is supposed to be excellent, but it wasn't open today. So we went for some lunch instead. We went to a self-serve cafe called Seeds to Totnes, where you pay for a plate and you can refill as much as you like. They serve a selection of salads and cakes, with the majority of their food being vegan. We filled our boots. Even if you try you like you're doing well, though. and get a small amount of everything, your plate ends up massive. It's really good. It looks really good. We ate our food and whilst we were leaving, we got some bad news about the product we're launching. Bugger. We haven't, told, we haven't told you what we're launching yet. We're launching the, the thing that we were launching, uh, that, that we are launching, the product that we are launching, is a, a, a vegan, luxurious Christmas hamper. The problem is, is that we were going to go and do the photo shoot, or go to the photo shoot, which is at a professional photographer's in this area now. But the, um, unfortunately, the professional photographer does not want to see us anymore, um, even though we've driven five hours to get here. But it's understandable because a friend of his, is, a friend of his, has just died, um, apparently, and which is really horrible. Um, so he doesn't want to see anybody. So we we were, so we can't go round. But he's gonna. The good thing is, and very honourable of him, and he, you know, he, he obviously didn't have to do it. Is he's going to be taking the photos of a hamper anyway, which, which we need to be able to sell the hamper. Um, so the end result, to summarise and conclude. We can't see the hamper and we've driven all this way to go and see it and we can't see it which is really really is a shame. We're collaborating with a, a vegan supermarket to launch it um, and we're going to go and see them still um, and hopefully <coughs> by the sounds of it they've got a couple of two of the stars of the show of the hamper so we get at least we get to go and try that um, and yeah that, I mean it's just a shame this is what happens. Um, yeah, uh, so let's go and see the two of the stars of the show of the hamper and it's still going to launch tomorrow, so it's all good. Well, that was a bit of a blow, but we aren't going to let that spoil it for us. We headed to go and see the stars of the hamper and to meet Becky at the Mighty Plants who we're collaborating with. 
Okay, cool. So behind my back are the two of the stars of the show. We, we think anyway, there's loads and loads of amazing things in the hamper. Um, we're going to stop this. We're going to stop going on about the hamper soon. We're just going to show you the full hamper later on. At the moment, all we've got are two of the uh, two of the features of the products in there. There's loads of amazing products in there. There's wine. There's cheese. There's um, puddings. There's all sorts of stuff. There's sort of plant-based meats that come from independent places that people probably won't have tried before, but are incredible. Some of the best in the country. Um, there's, yeah, the whole hamper is going to be incredible. Unfortunately, we can't show you that today. What we can show you are two of the stars of the show. Uh, and this is one of them, and that's the other. And we're going to show you them now. What we've got here is the UK's very, very first uh, vegan Terry's chocolate orange. It's made by a um, independent baker, chocolate baker, um, in I think the Midlands area named Fliss Fancy. Um, and these are insane. As you can see, they look just like Terry's chocolate orange, and they're going to be included in the hamper. And they're completely vegan. Mmm. A lot of these products have taken the whole team, us included especially, a lot of time to um, source and find and get so we can get them en masse before Christmas. And um, this one is a, almost a complete exclusive to this hamper and um, it's something that's not been done before in the UK as well and we're super excited about it. And you get to see it first hand um, as we have as well. These are the UK's first vegan Ferrero Rochers and there's been a couple of imitations done in the past accidentally vegan ones dark chocolate ones uh, nothing's actually been purposely made to be like a Ferrero Rocher but these are they're by a company called Vegan Cocoa Collective in Sheffield and this is them here and I'm gonna open one up for you look at that welcome to the UK's first proper vegan Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> it's a collaboration of um, independent businesses from around the UK and uh, including vegan wine as well and all the rest of it. Um, so we're so excited about it. It's a shame that we can't show you the full hamper, um, but it's been worth the trip to Devon to meet these guys and to try some of the amazing products in there. And we're gonna get the whole hamper now sent to my mum's address, which is in the Midlands which is going to be another few hours drive away at the end of the week. So I'm hoping at the end of this video, um, we'll get to show you the full hamper briefly, if not anything, because it's going to be very, very close to publishing on a Sunday. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed for that anyway. So we have finished doing like a load of marketing kind of things for the launch. And um, I mean, we're still doing little bits now, but it's starting to get dark. So we need to find somewhere to sleep tonight. Um, we like to find our park up before it actually gets dark. So um, yeah, we're looking to head off now as soon as we can to try and find somewhere. Um, we've got an idea of where we're gonna go and we think it's by the sea, so fingers crossed. We said our goodbyes to Becky and headed towards our park up, remembering that we still needed to find gas if we wanted a cup of tea or any kind of hot drink this evening. So the mission begins. We think B&Q might sell it. Um, I really want a cup of tea, so hopefully they do. B&Q only do the butane and the propane one. Yeah. There's Tesco's there, I think they do gas. Damn it. Okay, so we're gonna try Tesco's up the road. Apparently they might sell it, so let's see. Let's try and find an adjustable spanner. That means we have to buy an adjustable spanner. Adjustable spanner, done. I have to empty out all of our food out of this cupboard here so Liam can then access where the um, canister is. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. Oh, is that, what's that? A 3.9, oh, it's a 3.9 kilo. Shit. Oh no, Liam thinks that maybe uh, we've got the size wrong. Yeah, they've got one. They've got one. <sighs> oh, that only just opens it. Let's tear it out a bit, eh? Yeah. Back in the 
a sec. All of this just for a cup of tea. Woohoo! Do you want me to do it? No, it just simply doesn't fit. How did I get the last one on? Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but Janine just had a go and she's fixed, she's managed to sort it. I don't, don't know how. It's like she, she forged metal to make it work. That's one nil to the females. We packed up and hit the road and found our park up in the dark and chilled with a cup of tea after a really hectic day. Thank you. So it's morning, um, it's really early, it's like six o'clock in the morning, it's pitch black outside um, and we want to get up and go early because we're in the middle of this car park and it's a massive car park and it's really active and we hear that it gets quite busy early on and because we stayed here overnight we just want to get out of here so that's what we're doing. We're up early, so we may even miss the sunrise here, which is a shame um, because we don't even know what this park up looks like in the light. I'd actually like to stay and see what it looks like. Do you? Would yeah, you? yeah, just for curiosity. So, should we stay until well, it what gets... time sunrise? <laughs> it's like it's like seven, isn't it? Is it? I will just have to work that out. I don't know. Okay, we may catch a we may catch a few clips of it of sunrise, and then we're out of here. <laughs> So this is where we parked. There's our van there, I think. Yeah, so this is where we parked. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous, even though it's still really quite dark. Um, I can see that it's ju it's just looks like Gibraltar, but there. Um, and there's like a little beach down there. Yeah, if you can see, I'm no good at this backwards filming. There's like a little beach down there. I'll go down there and show you. I've just been for a wonder and around the corner, there's like this marina and it's so pretty. There's like beach huts and houses and lights everywhere. It looks really gorgeous. Um, really like something you'd see in maybe Italy or something. I, it was so unexpected turning around that corner but really gorgeous. Uh, okay, so the reason why we're up so early and we're leaving Devon to travel 200 miles to Birmingham. Um, and the reason why we're going to Birmingham is because we've got a very, very large, exciting parcel coming. Um, we're getting probably um, one of the biggest additions to the van is coming today. Uh, and we're gonna try and install it today and it's gonna change everything, hopefully. The new addition and the modification to the van that we're doing is we're getting rid of this double swivel seat, which we put in there thinking it was a really good idea. Obviously, the, the double seats have, were in the van to start off with. The swivel plate um, was, the, was the new thing that we did to it. But in our experience, we've probably swiveled that round probably less than half a dozen times in the whole time we've had the van. And it's supposed to be there to, so we can maximize the space and we've never used, we hardly use it. So what we're gonna do is gonna get rid of the double seat and have a single captain seat, which we've got a brand new captain seat. Um, and hopefully that means that we can, there's multiple benefits to it. Um, one being that we're gonna actually use it more and it'll swivel around a lot easier with the space given. And the other one, it means that we'll be able to climb through to the back without having to leave the vehicle. So Liam and Phil cracked on with making the adjustment to the seat. Having never done this before, they ran into a number of problems. From the bolts being loose and spinning rather than untightening, the seat belt being welded onto the seat, to other problems with the plate and also the spinning feature being blocked by another bolt. They eventually got there in the end with the help from two of Phil's friendly neighbours and I gave it the full captain test run. Ooh. Look how high she is. Is Does it go back? Yeah, so use the, use the things. Have a look at what, what you're doing. Don't break anything now, it's taken us all afternoon to put it in. Because it needs have a look at what. Have a look forwards. at Have a look at the diagram. What diagram? On the orange bits, on the orange levers. Do I put what? it up? Then I, 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 she, I evolved her to being <laughs> careless and now she's just reckless. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to spin it now. This is how you do it. Is it easily spun? Not sure. <gasps> it's spinning! Wow! 
Wow. That looks really cool. That's much better, easier than the other one, isn't it? Shall I get in it? Yeah. <sighs> That'll do, isn't it? Yeah, it needs to be... Push this way. Yeah. Like back. It's as far back as possible at the moment. So. Yeah, so this bit needs to go back for, to like relax. Yeah. But, but yeah, it really opens up the van, doesn't it? Yeah. It really makes it feel so much bigger in here. And we can climb through from the front to the back now. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. That's really good. Happy days. Yeah. Good work. Well done. Well done, folks. And it took half the street to do it. <laughs> we got there, didn't we? Yeah.